Oh, me. Ooh, a ramen day right there. All right, guys, it is now time for the entertainment news, and we're starting with this one. Diddy finally speaks up and made several sexual assault allegations. American rapper and business mogul Sean Diddy Combs had broken his silence regarding the sexual assault allegations and lawsuits leveled against him by different women. Just so you know, Diddy is facing a fourth lawsuit less than one month after he settled Cassie's rape lawsuit against him despite his denials. He also faced two subsequent allegations of sexual misconduct and has once again been sued, but this time for allegations that he participated in a gang rape of a then 17-year-old in 2003. Aggravated, he took to his Instagram page to debunk all the allegations, emphasizing that the women involved were simply looking to be paid off. Diddy wrote, and I quote, Enough is enough. For the last couple of weeks, I have sat silently and watched people try to assassinate my character, destroy my reputation and my legacy. Sickening allegations have been made against me by individuals looking for a quick payday. Let me be absolutely clear. I did not do any of the awful things being alleged. I will fight for my name, my family and for the truth, end of quote. All of this is coming after the fourth lawsuit which claimed a girl named Jane Doe was gang raped inside Diddy's recording studio in Manhattan by the rapper, his friend Harvey Perry, and an, un an unidentified third man. She also alleged that uh, she had been trafficked across state lines and given copious amounts of drugs and alcohol by them. She also allegedly claimed the men raped her in the restroom at Diddy's house recording studio while she was a high school student and Combs was 34 years old. Wow. Mm -hmm. <sighs> crazy things are happening. Yeah, it's been crazy for mm -hmm. Didi. Uh, and uh, one thing I know is that, yes, people do this by the side. Yep. I mean, uh, going away from all the things that they said he's done, if he's really done it. But people do this just to get money mm -hmm. uh, sometimes, especially when they see that people are already... Uh, making or laying claims to that you did a certain thing. So uh, some people, all. some people will just come when they need money and they will do this. But we wouldn't know yet yep. whether this is true or right. not. But the one for Cassie, it's been very, it's been very, very uh, sickening. It's been very pathetic. Like mm -hmm. thinking about that, that how can a girl go through that? And the fact that she even said that she had to take out how many babies. Sure. Uh, you know, she had to abort for DD, and she even, uh, you know, there was even one that was said that perhaps I should say allegedly now that it was said that you know uh, they had they had her do um, you know surgery like a boob surgery, yeah. and at the end of like that same day they took it out. You know how excruciating that pain can be because somebody did not like it or something. So I am just hoping that all of these are wrong because I think DD is just done forever if he actually really committed all of this at the end of the day. Uh, when I see this, my heart breaks. And I don't know why I feel so much for him. Yeah. I just feel so much for him because this is somebody who has worked at building his brand. And I think that if Didi at the end of the day is going to be, uh, you know, uh, guilty of all of this, yeah. I am going to say that Omo, he has made it affect everything he has worked for, his family, his children, and I really pity his children because and I'm just, that is no legacy that is living. I'm just going to end by saying that uh, people out there should be careful because you wouldn't want to build something to the highest peak and then something, well, just one tiny thing, would just drop everything. That's right. So just be careful everything you do. Okay, let's move on. Daddy Yankee is done with reggaeton. Puerto Rican artist Daddy Yankee has seemingly announced his retirement from reggaeton music during a recent concert. He reveals that he's given his life to Christ and wants his next chapter to be about spreading God's word. In the concert footage making the rounds, Daddy Yankee addressed a cheering crowd in Puerto Rico, admitting to feeling an emptiness for a long time and that he has been trying to feel it. Speaking in Spanish, he said, I was able to tour the world for years, winning many awards and applause, but I realized something the Bible says. What is the entire world worth to a man if he loses his soul? He added, Jesus lives in me and I will live for him. 
The Bible says everyone that publicly embraces God here on earth will also recognize him in front of the Lord. Daddy Yankee closed his comments by saying, I hope you will work with me on this new journey. Never follow any man. I am only. Sharing the clip on his Instagram page, Daddy Yankee wrote to family, this day for me is the most important day in my life. Tonight, I recognize I am not ashamed to tell the whole world that Christ lives in me and that I will live for him. This is the end of one chapter and the beginning of a brand new one. Just so you know, Daddy Yankee is a multi-award winning rapper, singer-songwriter, uh, dubbed the King of Rigaton is popular for his international hit single, uh, that is Gasoline, Gasoline, which is credited with introducing reggaeton to audiences worldwide and making the music genre a global phenomenon and not forgetting his collaboration with Louis Fonsi on the hit single, Desperado. Despacito. Despacito. Oh, yeah, yeah. Despacito. So the thing with Daddy Yankee is he has made a major impact. Like, you can't listen to his song and not love it. You can't listen to his song and not move your body. Despacito is one song that, even if you cannot dance, you still move your body because Despacito, even the um, first one, I'm like, how does he do it? How does he create that magic? Like, every time he performs, the crowd always goes wild. And then now saying he's living reggaeting for what he's known for, what he has been out there for, what he stands for. Well, uh, I'm not saying it's a bad thing for him to leave music and give his life to Christ. At least we've seen people like Kanye West, who have had outrages and all of that to do gospel music, and they're winning awards at uh, award ceremonies, international award ceremonies for gospel music. So I just wish him the very best, and uh, we look forward to maybe him doing gospel music. Yeah, we wish him the very best. I mean, when you get to a point in your life and you think that this is the twist you want to give to it, Oh, well, we're here for it. Let's see how that goes. I wish you the best. Oh, we're going to miss you in the reggaeting world. All right, now let's check out what went down at the Legend Concert with FaZe, after which we will be back with, as well, just let's go on this, uh, on music this music break, break and yeah. then we'll be back. All right, guys, welcome back to the show, guys. It's right here, still East Flash, and we still have Hanish Money in the building looking pretty. <laughs> Thank you, you look good. Thank you, Lady Cat is also in the building, and I want to say welcome to Social View, the place you can get your daily fix of the fun and craziness going on in the world of social media. So just focus on the screen and let the craziness begin. And we're starting with at Athena 30. He said, I saw the married list that my family gave my sister's fiance. If that guy come back, I'll report him to EFCC straight. So you said, you know that your family. <laughs> and there is a particular tribe that, ah. uh, you know, is known for this particular yep. one. And one time I stumbled on a content on uh, YouTube where two ladies from that tribe uh, we're having a discussion and they were like, uh, uh, please, let's calm down now. Because afterwards now, you'll be saying that uh, your girls are not married. married. These guys, mm. they want to marry them, but they scared them away. Uh, you know, how about building something together, you know? But now you want to collect everything. Exactly. You want to build a house on top of it. Somebody wants to come and marry your... Uh, uh, when it's beg. not that you're selling your daughter? Suffer, suffer, I beg, I beg, I beg, I beg, I beg. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, this is uh, to all the guys who like to show off, you know, says that girl you they buy goat head for every weekend. You don't check what she takes, save your name. If it be Femi, goat head, oh. Eh, but if it is Femi, now, goat Now, head. goat head you they buy now. You don't buy room. Yes, if she didn't say that you, your head is goat head. Exactly. Said, Femi, goat head, that is, that is what you, you buy. You buy, so she's remembering you by what you buy for her. So if you buy roses for her, she writes Femi rose. If you buy a car, Femi Rolls Royce, you know, and Atibe, Belo, you understand? Uh -huh. If you don't get it, forget, forget about, about it. it. <laughs> but then, do you know what guys used to say, ladies? Ah, that one is terrible. It's crazy. I just saw Jumo, hmm. uh, our studio manager, mm. just turned his head because he knows that he's guilty. Wow. <laughs> Only for sometimes some guys say some girls name with plumber and everything so that so that babe, babe, babe uh, they will not say, find ah, out ah, why is the plumber yeah, calling you bring, pick it one day plumber will not be like plumber say hey, 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 hey. hey. oh, hey, the plumber <laughs> okay let's just move on everyone is looking at J1 like this like what's up so it says saving in this great country is a joke 
You save this month, next month your savings save you. And then this person is now saying, oh, your savings they even reach next month. Me, if I save for rainy days, now the next week rain they fall. <laughs> Omo, I think that saving truly is ah, very, very difficult for some it people. Is. Yeah, I think I've spoken to somebody in the same company and the person was saying that, eh, when I was talking about saving, the person said, what about you save that he doesn't even know how to save? But I tell you one thing is that that thing is discipline. We can actually mm -hmm. save with any amount. I didn't know it too. In fact, it was my younger sister who taught me how to save. To, to, to start with, and you think that I should be you grew up in the same. <laughs> Do you understand? But guess what? I think it is just being disciplined and putting your mind. Because somehow, sometimes you just look at the money and you're like, if I save this thing, how am I going to? But I think it is actually a good thing. Just money, save. And don't go and spend the next day. <laughs> save, keep it to the end of the year. So that December like this. You know, just like, like, hey. people just, uh, they don't know that uh, you have been managing. You have been managing. And then I feel like the major problem people have is they feel like if they're going to save, it has to be huge amounts of money. If yeah. you start with 5K, 10K yeah. monthly, you know, before you know it, mm -hmm. you, you got 100K to save. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so La Eleno is here thinking and uh, what's the reason for this thought? He says, even transport fare to go search for daily bread don't cost past daily bread. Can you relate? It's true, <laughs> honey pot. <laughs> So and where you get the daily bread from? The transport that you, the transport that, that takes you there. Thank you. Has already consumed the. And this is why when some people are pricing you, and you're giving them your rates and your price of saying, ah, because it's logistics, too much, it's too much. Logistics, logistics and swallow, to swallow the whole money. By the time you look at logistics, you look at styling, you look at makeup, only for how much you mean? So how much I pay me for my crafts? Ha. And you want me to come and stand tall? That's a crazy thing. But anyway, guys, we're done with Social View for today. And uh, we're about to check out what went down at the Face Legend concert. Keep it locked, guys. Alrighty. I was actually really hoping that I would see the Plantation Boys yep. perform. But that did not happen because, you know, Face was here last week. And he was telling us that, you know what? Uh, uh, I'll make you like, he has spoken to them differently. And I said, well, how, what will I give you if this one works? But at the end of the day, it did not. But it's okay. Very lovely show there. Congratulations to FaZe and well done to everybody who was at that concert and made it work. All right, so join us on the show this afternoon is a multi-talented artist who stylistically blends his sporadic rhymes over a variety of genre sounds. Ladies and gentlemen, let's make welcome to the show this afternoon, Jerome, aka Big Jew. Ooh. Did I get your... Jerome. Mm, mm. Jerome. 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 Okay. Because I know it's from your full name. Yeah, Obia Jerome. Okay, Obia Jerome. Yeah, Jerome. So, so why did you decide to start using your real name? Because uh, I saw somewhere that you had a name you were using before and you weren't really feeling it. What happened? Well, uh, labels and things, you know, the label kind of owned that name. So okay. once I... Like once Kiss, I, Daniel. Like Kiss, Daniel and Kiss. Changing yeah, to like, yeah. So I had to... You know, give the label uh, to be able to leave Let's the label. Go. Just take the name, take everything, yeah. and you know, let me start, all, let me start over. all over from fresh. And now this is you. And now this is where we are. <laughs> all right, fantastic. You want to tell us a bit about your journey and get into this new face that you are, that you're starting all over, and how does it even feel to start from the scratch? Yep. Knowing that you had worked to some extent and then you had to start all over. Yeah, it's uh, it's surreal because um, you know when you're when you decide to leave um, a, a comfortable situation. Um, the unknown is always scary, uh, but, you know, we put the work in and um, I just knew, you know, in the social media era that it wouldn't take too long. Mm -hmm. um, if you if you have good material, if you have a if you have a strong fan base, they'll find you. I didn't have to do much promoting, but, you know, they just they just figured it out and they started following. And yeah, it's the material. We just have to be consistent and we've been consistent all year long. And now we're here. Where did you start from? Now, when you say, where did you start from? How did you start for you? Ah, oh, man, it started um, when I was in high school. Um, you know, I, I, I actually went to high school in, um, in America, Houston, Texas. So, and during lunch times, you know, boys would just gather around and on the table started freestyling and things like that. And I would see it and I, and, and, and I would want to be part of that. And I just didn't know how. Um, and then, you know, so I started stealing Snoop Dogg's rhymes, you know, and I started joining the group. And, you know, that, 
the adrenaline from that, you know, crowd going crazy. Just it's just our little group, but somebody caught me and was like, ah, that's Snoop Dogg. That's Snoop Dogg. <laughs> that, that, that sounds real familiar. <laughs> you know, so after that I was like, all right, I think I can I can start doing my own. And then from there, that's how my journey started. And then, you know, and it's here you are on. today. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so let's talk about your I'm a piano EP. What birthed that? Was it the fact that Okay, everyone's doing I'm a piano, I'm a piano is trending. Or was it because you already had a selected list or collection of music that you wanted to put out there and you had been looking for a name and that just came? How did you come about that? Man, so I was, ba I was here because usually I don't really, you know, I'm not a big club person. So I'm not really, I don't know what's happening in the streets. But when I came back here last year for Dirty December, that's all I was hearing in the clubs was, I'm a piano, I'm a piano. And I literally fell in love with the sound and I literally mm. fell in love with, and then I decided, you know what? You know, I met with some producers and met with um, uh, Sergi Star and, you know, we decided to come up with something. Um, and then we started working on the project and then I called it 88 um, because I am a astronomer, like I'm a ne ne neurologist, you know, I'm a number of person. And, um, you know, that's a strong, eight is a strong number of the universe. And so, and that's how we got, you know, to where we got the album and the EP in 88. Oh, fantastic. Um, so now that you're in Nigeria, of course, you just came, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and I'm just thinking again that, you know, uh, it is dead to December already in Nigeria. And, uh, well, I don't know whether you have plans for, like, maybe you have a concert or something, or what exactly are you doing this end of the year? So, so I've been around for, for like two weeks now, mm. and um, you know, we've been doing a lot of media, um, uh, media spots, and um, in terms of concerts, I, I mean, my, my, I was trying to beat the Dirty December crowd this year, uh, so I was trying to, I'll probably be gone by the end of the weekend. Mm. Um, yeah. I'll be gone by the weekend, but you know I plan on. We've met a lot of contacts. Uh, we, we spoke to a lot of people, and we have a lot of shows coming up this year. So my goal is to try to come back more often as possible. Mm. Okay. What about possible collaborations? Possible. I well, this um, I just dropped a song with Flavor. Um, that is one of the you know one of our big collaborations that um, we're trying to use to en enter the year, end the year off, and enter the new year into a in a in a heavy start. And then I have a collaboration with a, a Bini artist um, called T-Bay. Oh. And uh, we're doing like a duo, you know, kind of situation. We're working on a whole project together. Wow. Um, and, you know, Bini has uh, Rema and then he has Charlie Puppy. And then T-Bay yeah. <laughs> is the next one coming wow. out. Yeah, he's, he's on that level. And, um, you know, so there's, I'm excited about the projects that we've, we've put out and the songs that we've recorded. And I'm excited to see, let people hear it. Amazing. Well, we have his uh, video. I think we should just play that right yeah. about now and then we will come back. Yeah, gliding and sliding right there. Guys, we just checked out your music video, gliding and sliding, taking us back in time. So mm. what is your fascination with the old days, like old times? <sighs> yeah, man, it just um, I, the, 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 the looks, the froze, the pics, the, um, the colorful clothes. The fitted clothes, you know, there was a time, you know, that even I just, it kind of shaped my style and my outfits and things like that. So, yeah. And I, thankfully, fashion revolves. Yep. So we it always we come are back even around. having all of this back. Yeah. And then you having Bantu Nuts on your head. Oh, oh, oh. I particularly like that. I mean, I don't think that I've seen Bantu Nuts on mm -hmm. guys like that. I see other things, right? Yeah. But Bantu Nuts, I don't think I've I seen. appreciate it. Yeah. So what influences your music? Um, you know, my, I try to put it in my life, um, and, um, and just some of the artists that I've had that I admire, um, you know, really kind of play a part in it, but it's really just my experience in my life. Um, yeah, that, that really, the, 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 the trials and tribulations, um, the fun part of it, you know, the jubilation and just how I'm feeling in the moment is really how it goes. All right, so tell us what are the plans that you have of moving on? Yeah, so the the our next year we have an AP drop in next year, and um, yeah, and we, like I said with T Bay, we have that um, we have some songs coming out, and yeah, we're really just gonna push that and um, see how and just give it to the people and let them see you know 
and see the reception and see how they like it. Okay, okay. Uh, for your fans or for people who want to reach out to you on social media now that you've got the attention, what are your social media handles? The Real Jurum uh, on all platforms, whether it's Tinder, uh, whether it's Twitter, um, Instagram, you know, all platforms, email, D H E R T H E R E A L J U R U M, The Real Jurum. All, all right. Platforms. Thank you so much for coming on the show, Jurum. It was nice to have you right here. And I really appreciate y'all beautiful ladies having me today. All right, guys, we will go on this music break, and we, when we do get back, the show will continue, guys. <laughs>